All right, everyone, good afternoon. We're gonna jump in. Um, my name is Dana Parsons. I'm the Director of Grants and Professional Development here at the Maryland State Arts Council. And we are thrilled to see you this afternoon uh, for our online offering today. Um, and we're here uh, celebrating with the Maryland Traditions team in regards to the full breadth of technical assistance, how we can uh, embrace our collaboration together throughout the entirety of the application process um, and the review process so that you can see us as uh, your new best friends, your advocates, and your cheerleaders throughout this entire um, journey <laughs> that is the application process at the Maryland State Arts Council. Uh, so our um, offerings specifically online during this very virtual time have really been driven from a constituent perspective uh, and so that's how our offering is brought to you today specifically when the declared state of emergency hit us in march um, we've been in a very uh, we've been in a cycle that's been really committed to providing offerings based on constituent feedback which we recognize is changing pretty quickly uh, in this in this landscape of uh, trying to pivot, to use the word of the year here. Um, and so our online offerings really take a perspective of looking towards the future um, and seeing those possibilities, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and embracing the support that's surrounding us during this time, especially because it can feel very challenging. Uh, so that is the philosophical perspective of how we arrived here today. Um, so before we jump in with some very rich content for you, um, I'd just like to go through a couple of brief things to ground our session today about our organization and then also about our technology platform um, in case this is your first time using it. So to mute or resume your audio, you can hit the mute button at the bottom left of center. And that button, if you're calling in on the phone, is star six. Similarly with video, that video button is on the bottom right of center. In the upper right corner of your screen, you'll find a tab for the chat box. Uh, so those three lines will allow you to find the chat box and then engage in that way. And know that if you enter messages into the chat, they'll be displayed for all attendees. Any URLs will be shared in the chat box as well, so you can click directly there. You can turn captions on at the bottom right of the screen, and the live captioning will differentiate which attendee is speaking. I will say that Google captioning is occasionally accurate and occasionally not. Um, so uh, that's happening as well. And to leave the meeting, you can press the phone icon at the bottom center of the screen. And here's just a quick shot of features uh, so you can kind of see how it all works together. If you have any technology questions at all, feel free to um, unmute yourself, jump in and um, ask us uh, how we can help. So just a couple of brief slides so that we can ground today's work. We begin all meetings at the Maryland State Arts Council in this manner. And in alignment with best accessibility practices, I'll now read these slides aloud. Our equity and justice statement, the Maryland State Arts Council celebrates our state's diversity and promotes the role of the arts to connect people, bridge our differences, and inspire an appreciation of our shared humanity. Because the arts have the power to transform individuals and communities, MSAC is committed to advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion in all aspects of our organization and across all the communities of our state and in supporting our partners in modeling the same commitment. Our vision, MSAC plays an essential role ensuring every person has access to the transformative power of the arts and mission MSAC advances the arts in our state by providing leadership that champions creative expression, diverse programming, equitable access, lifelong learning, and the arts as a celebrated contributor to the quality of life for all the people of Maryland. And uh, our strategic plan has resulted in five goals to increase participation, provide intentional support, build capacity, leverage connections, and bolster Maryland arts. Our work today uh, specifically focuses on goals two, four, and five. And finally, as we enter into a later discussion portion of our offering, um, we like to embrace these creative meeting actions at the Maryland State Arts Council as part of our way of collaborating together. To celebrate being in this space with other creative people, engage with everyone's presence as a gift, acknowledge that together we know a lot, enter the conversation with curiosity and inquiry, share your idea and trust that it will be heard, use I statements, focus your language on the task at hand, hold one another accountable with care, 
apply yes and. I hear your idea and I'm going to add to it and to balance speaking and listening. So here I will pass it over to our state folklorist, Chad Buderbaugh, to uh, move us forward. Chad? Thanks, Dana. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, just always like to take a moment to thank you, Dana, for holding this space for this professional development. It's a lot of admin work, and we appreciate such a steady stream of content coming out from the Arts Council. Uh, as Dana said, everyone, I'm the state folklorist. I'm responsible for traditional arts grant making in Maryland. And we, in these six months, have heard quite a bit from some of our constituents and traditions about what technical assistance means, where the boundaries of it are, and how it can be useful to our folks that we support. Uh, some of you I know are involved in the traditional arts. Some of you I know are, are probably not or less involved in the traditional arts. This webinar will have information that I think will be useful to everyone. It's also being recorded, so you can come back to it and a particularly useful resource would be to point artists toward this webinar if you happen to encounter them in the future and they have questions about how they can work with us. So what we'll be covering today is laid out here. After some introductions, we'll give you an overview of the Maryland Traditions Program and the things that we support. Uh, we will then move into what is technical assistance, sort of from start to finish. And we will come to a close with our presentation with some presentation from our accessibility coordinator on the accommodations that we're able to offer for folks who, who, who might not be able to run through our quote unquote regular process. Uh, we'll finish up with some reflection. And I really want to open the space through the entire hour for anyone to unmute at any time, ask a question, make a comment, share an idea, uh, with your voice or with the chat box feature. Uh, we're a small enough group that that should be possible. Um, so we will have a little bit of space at the end for questions, but, but honestly, let's, uh, let's just keep it as uh, dialogue centric as possible. Slide. The folks who are on the call today are our accessibility coordinator, Precious Blake. She is also the arts and education program director. Myself. Ryan Coons, who is taking notes and will answer any questions as needed. He's our folk life specialist with Maryland Traditions. And we intended to have Emily Sollenberger, our art services program director with us. She's unexpectedly out of the office today, but the good news is that MSAC employs two art services program directors and the other one, Laura Weiss, is with us listening in and will be able to answer uh, any questions uh, as we go along. Our contact information is here. Of course, it's also on our website. Our door is always open. Slide. So the Maryland Traditions Program, as you know, is one of several uh, genre-specific programs at MSAC. What's different about Maryland Traditions to other programs is that we are not bound by the art form as much as we are bound by the cultural context. So where another program director might be dealing mostly with visual art or with music or with dance, we in Maryland Traditions deal with all of those things as long as it is connected to traditional arts and culture in some way. The way that we define the traditional arts is as community-based living cultural traditions handed down by example or word of mouth. And again, we're really looking at the history of where these pieces have come from. Just go back a slide, please. Uh, traditional arts could be musical in nature, as we see here with Piedmont Blues. That's Phil Wiggins and Junius Brickhouse. Next slide. Traditional arts could be material in nature, as with uh, the Piscataway, excuse me, beadwork of uh, what is now known as Prince George's, Charles Calvert, and St. Mary's counties. Next slide. Traditional arts could be even occupational, as with the uh, crabbers and oyster fishermen of the Chesapeake Bay. Next slide. And traditional arts could be culinary in nature, as with the stuffed ham traditions of Southern Maryland. And I think we have somebody on from Charles County here, so that particular delicacy should be familiar to you. Next slide. We have a number of different granting opportunities at MSAC that are designed to support the traditional arts. Uh, the Majority of those, I'm going to say, are inside the Maryland Traditions Program. The first one is the Folk Life Apprenticeship. That is a $5,000 grant for traditional arts education. We bring a master artist together with a learner artist, and they work together to make sure the traditions are being passed forward. 
Uh, Mimi Dietrich is on the call. She's a former master artist for Baltimore Album Quilting several years ago. Our Heritage Award program also is a $5,000 grant recognizing long-term achievement in the traditional arts. Those go out annually. It's a public nomination process. In fact, nominations are open now. So we can certainly chat more offline about that if you're interested in nominating somebody from your era, area. Uh, and for the last two pieces, um, Laura, Weiss, would you be comfortable just kind of going over how the traditional arts interact with these programs? Sure, no problem. Um, so the traditional arts, uh, we accept uh, applications in both the creativity grant program and our grants for organizations program. Um, the creativity program, creativity grant program is, um, it's a relatively new program that's been around for just over a year now. Um, that grant, uh, it, uh, I don't know how much detail you want me to go into, Chad, but <laughs> to give a brief overview of it, um, it's accepted on a rolling basis and it is reviewed monthly by a panel. Um, it's a relatively quick application process, just three questions that um, focuses uh, primarily on the community engagement and community relevance of the program uh, that you're applying for. It's available both to independent artists and it's also available to organizations. Um, that's kind of the basic overview there of creativity grants. And then grants for organizations is um, our general operations uh, support program, which is available to just organizations and it's available to organizations that are over the $50,000 um, mark in terms of their budget size. Um, we actually just closed the intent to apply, uh, that was a couple of days ago for the FY22 cycle. Um, and uh, so that'll then open up again next year in FY23. So if you're interested in that, keep an eye out. Did I cover everything? <laughs> that was perfect. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, just really quickly pictured here, we have a former Folklife Apprenticeship team that is Oliver Trinidad and Ruben Dario Corona, who worked together on Dominican barbering traditions in the Folklife Apprenticeship a couple of years ago. Uh, next slide. Finally, inside of Maryland Traditions, we do support a Folklife Network. These are continuing operating funds for eight regional Folklife Centers around the state. Those Folklife Centers are located in existing uh, organizations and they represent traditional arts efforts within typically a somewhat larger organization. Colleges, universities, and museums, and nonprofits are parts of the Folklife Network. I bring them up here because uh, they too would be great resources for technical assistance. Uh, they're very aware as Folklife Network grantees of our other traditional arts offerings at Maryland Traditions. They know what the Folklife Apprenticeship is, they know what the Heritage Award is. So if there's an artist in your area, if you're an artist who is seeking a little more information on how we are supportive to traditional arts, you might also consider starting with uh, one of the regional Folklife Centers in your area, which, uh, which might have a little better idea of the kind of cultural landscape of where you are. We know Maryland is incredibly diverse in that way. Uh, and that's but at the same at this by the same token, that's not a suggestion that you don't get in touch with us. We're we're very much there, but you've also got these local resources that you can lean on as well. Next slide, please. So um, many of you have probably been part of a workplace in the past where there's certain vocabulary you use in-house that just becomes almost unthinking. It's a phrase or an idea or a concept that you share as staff members but you don't necessarily ever define it and put it out there in the world, even though it might be intended to benefit those who you serve. Uh, in traditions this year, uh, one such phrase for us has been technical assistance. We say it to each other all the time, but we kind of realized that we've never really dug into that and, and said clearly what we mean when we say technical assistance. So that was the genesis of this webinar. And as near as we can define it, our technical assistance in Maryland traditions and really across MSAC is, direct individualized support from our staff to assist you in your relationship with our funding programs. That's very broad, but of course, technical assistance is very broad, which we're about to go into in a little more detail. Next slide. So the, the first step really does start with you. If you're interested in the funding that we offer, the other resources that we offer, um, the, the best first place to start would be our guidelines documents. 
Each of our grants at MSAC has a set of guidelines published in PDF form that goes over the purpose of the grant, all of the specifics, and those are available on, on our website year round. So that's a way to sort of self-educate if you're interested in connecting with one of our programs. Uh, the uh, guidelines also include evaluation criteria, so any potential applicants could immediately understand how they would be judged or evaluated by our panelists. Um, the, uh, the guidelines documents also contain, I mean, it's boilerplate, but there's stuff in the boilerplate that's very, very important. important. Uh, there are agency-wide policies, that's MSAC-specific policies that you can read in there, as well as departmental policies. So MSAC, as many of you know, is housed within the Maryland Department of Commerce. That's an economic development agency. So a lot of what we do is um, geared toward or, or includes efforts for sort of uh, looking at the, the economic aspects, the revenue generating aspects of the arts and uh, hopefully reducing the distance between our arts and arts organizations and, and funding. Um, so policies like that are in the guidelines and then finally, all of our guidelines are regularly reevaluated. They're always up for conversation. And if we detect a need out in the field that is not being met by one of our grants programs, and say we have multiple people uh, expressing that need to us, uh, any of our programs could be reevaluated through a public vetting process uh, with, with feedback and uh, new policies put forward for the approval of our board and the attorney general. Any questions here? Okay, let's go to the next slide. The, the other broad piece where I would recommend that folks start just to get a sense of our programs is with the application itself. Uh, all of our applications by default are uh, done via online forms in the grants management system Smart Simple. Smart Simple does require the creation of an account. You can do that for free from our website, msac.org. Uh, very broadly, each smart, simple application includes logistical info and narrative info. So what do I mean by that? Logistical is just basically your point of contact information, your electronic signature, any budgetary materials which might be greater or lesser based on the particular grant program. Uh, and then the narrative is where you tell your story and make a case to the panelists that you are in a good position to receive this Arts Council funding. And if you're trusted with that funding, that you'll do a great job. Um, of course, uh, applications are open for a limited window. In the Maryland Traditions program, uh, applications are open for six weeks per program. It's, it's slightly different, I believe, with other programs. So that's just a matter of reading the guidelines and finding out um, when your application window would be. And finally, all of our applications are advertised online. So if you're not already, I would recommend signing up for our mailing lists and regularly checking our website, again, msac.org, just to get a sense of what our calendar is like and what, what all of our, wh which applications would be um, coming available um, from month to month. Any questions here or comments? Next slide, please. So now we're really going to get into what technical assistance is. Once you've kind of done your due diligence and you've read a little bit of the guidelines, uh, maybe you've even created your smart, simple account, you go in and you look at the application. Maybe the application is totally overwhelming and you're feeling like you're treading water and you don't know what to do. That's where we start to come in. And um, uh, again, all of, of this technical assistance that we offer is individualized. So it, it really is a matter of one-to-one -one contact. If you're having an issue or a question, call us. Uh, this is tradition-centric presentation, but call any of us and we can help you with crafting a really strong narrative to make sure that your application is as competitive as possible to, to the panelists. Uh, we can help you uh, in any of the genres in which we are experts. Uh, Laura is a performing arts expert. Um, uh, Precious is a visual arts expert in particular. Um, I want to say narrative journalism, but I feel like I'm getting it wrong. I'm so, well, I mean, I, am I close, Precious? Is that, is that You're super close. Visual journalism. Visual journalism is, is is very much in Precious's wheelhouse. Of course, Ryan Coons and I are traditional arts experts. So if you want to dive a little deeper into any of those genres, that's what we're here for, to, to help you um, understand a little bit better how to, how to acquire funding. We can also give you overviews of the process. Applying for a grant is one piece of a much larger process that involves advertising that the applications are open, seeking panelists, 
um, all of the administrative work that Dana and Tammy do in terms of getting the money out the door through Annapolis and into your mailbox. So we can tell you a little about that and, and give you clarification on timelines. We can even help you with picking a grant program. Uh, many, many times someone would call Maryland Traditions and say, I have this great idea for a project. And uh, my answer has been, that is a great project. I don't think it's right for Maryland Traditions. You probably want to seek some funding through arts and education or possibly creativity grants. So we can get you into the right place so that you're not wasting your time in the wrong program. Uh, we can help you with budgeting and planning guidance. A lot of that comes just from the volume of applications that we review. And we can kind of tell on the front end often uh, when something is a little bit too big in scope or when the available funding might not, might not match uh, the uh, intention of the applicants. Uh, and any other needs, uh, anything that's going through your mind or any experience that you're having in the application process, we are here to do our best to, to help with that. Um, the little staff layout here, just, just to remind you, um, in this webinar, Precious Blake is here as our accessibility coordinator mainly, and um, myself and Ryan Coons and not Emily, but Laura Weiss are here uh, um, uh, representing traditional arts. So these are sort of like your, your points of contact for those two different pieces. Um, hearing no questions, we will move on to uh, a form of uh, technical assistance that we often um, work toward uh, inside Maryland traditions, and that's translation assistance. Uh, as you can imagine, as you know, there are many, many different cultures represented in Maryland. And uh, folks will sometimes assume that Maryland traditions only means, you know, white Eurocentric traditions that have been here since the state was founded in the 17th century, but that's not true. We support any traditions. There could be new groups coming here through patterns of immigrations who might've only been in Maryland for a few years. And they're very, very much eligible for Maryland traditions grants. And uh, we're very excited about that. And we also recognize that we won't always be able to be speaking the same language. Um, so we do offer translation assistance uh, in an effort to strive to accommodate all languages. Uh, we do offer um, access to pro professional translation services of various kinds. Uh, we've had situations in Maryland traditions where an applicant might not be comfortable with a professional translator, but they maybe know a neighbor who speaks the same language who could help. We've tried to facilitate those kinds of relationships. Uh, and the, the, the guidance here, the, the strategy here is really if there is a translation need that we hear it as early as possible, even before the granting period opens, possibly, so that we can ensure that everybody has access to be able to complete the application uh, in good time. Precious is going to give you a lot more on this in just a few slides, so I'm, I'm keeping it broad for now, but any questions on translation assistance? Okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, we also work with a lot of folks in, in Maryland traditions who might not have high speed internet access 24 seven. And uh, we are very aware of uh, the fact that, um, that that's true, that not everybody has access to the same types of devices. You know, there are some people on a laptop, some on a desktop, tablets, phones, might be using Wi-Fi, might be using data. Um, might be living uh, on Kaiser's Ridge in Garrett County, and you know maybe the signal's not so great, uh, or even in certain parts of Baltimore City where there aren't great signals. Um, so, so we try to to hear that from our constituents and offer a support for those that might be having data or Wi-Fi limitations. Uh, another piece is that um, the application forms themselves could present a bit of a barrier for some folks, and we try to be cognizant of that and offer assistance. Uh, we do in the folk life apprenticeship, as a matter of fact, offer a mechanism for um, verbally spoken narrative sections of the of the application rather than having to type into a form. Uh, so that's something that we introduced last year and hard copy options would be available too if that happens to be a, a situation where, where somebody just really needs that uh, we can we can we can work with you there. Uh, OK, next slide. I'm going to pass Precious to tell you a little bit more about uh, kind of everything I just lost. <laughs> so go ahead. Precious. Great. So before we get started, I'm just going to drop a couple links in the chat that I'll be referencing. 
So the accessibility program and in our initiative at the State Arts Council has really started with a public editing process. Chad mentioned this, that whenever there is a large overhaul of any sort at the State Arts Council, we go through this public revisions process and we just completed it. So in May and June of this year, we convened about 20 editors to really do a deep dive into our programming, our policies, our procedures, and then forward thinking. So what our implementation looks like. So on your screen, you'll see what the timeline is from start to finish. So before the editor group, we had a public accessibility and disability justice listening session. We did an editor group, which was split up into two sections because there's a lot about accessibility we wanted to discuss. And now we're in the public feedback portion of this, meaning that all the things that, you know, the editors were talking about in regards to actions, statements, policies, we want to get additional feedback before we move through an official approval process. So we'd encourage you, if you haven't already, to sign up and to attend a regional arts summit session because at the regional art summit sessions there will also be an accessibility breakout right beforehand where you can connect with me directly about what accessibility needs you have if you want to also share feedback and guidance about what our implementation plan looks like our implementation plan is in two places it's on our website and it's on a padlet link which is in the chat box and it's a pretty intense document. Our editors really thought, we told them to you know, think sky high really about what the things we should be doing for accessibility. And so after we collect all of the feedback from the regional art summits, we will then take that into an alignment process. So we'll integrate this into all of our policies, our procedures as a staff, and also make sure that there is staff um, accountability on the implementation action plan. We all know that accessibility is a lifelong process, so we are not thinking that this will be done in two months, but this is something that we are dedicated to doing for the long haul. And then at the end of this year, we will be having an equity and justice workshop that's focused on accessibility, where the MSAC staff and our collaborative partners will be a part of. This is only the beginning, but this is a start to our timeline. Next slide. So if you are interested in providing feedback about accessibility, here are all the different ways you can do it, right? Accessibility means several different options that are catered to you. So first, all of the relevant links are at msac.org slash accessibility. If you haven't already, please sign up for a accessibility session at the Regional Arts Summit. If you don't want to attend the session, that's okay too. You can just add comments directly to the Padlet Comments, clarifying questions are also encouraged. If something is not clear, that's good information for me to know. And then you can also submit your comments to our feedback form. So if the Padlet is too complicated for you and you just want to send me a paragraph, you can do that in the feedback form or just email me directly. I'm okay with that too. Next slide. So, since the implementation plan will be rolled out over time, there of course is a misalignment on what things are immediately available and what things we're planning for the future. So the currently available accommodations that we can do are all the things that are on your screen. So um, ASL interpretation, live captioning, we're not really doing in-person things, but if we were, ASL interpretation, live captioning in person, plain language translation, traditional relay, hearing carryover, speech to speech, visually assisted STS, which is speech to speech, voice carryover, caption telephone, braille TTY, so if you have braille on your keyboard, Spanish relay, which is translation over the phone, and large print for any handouts, physical handouts. Now, in the meantime, if there is a need that's not on this list that we haven't publicly identified, all you have to do is just reach out to us and we can make sure that you get the needs. All the artists and anyone who participates in our programming can get the needs that um, they 
request. Thank you. So how to request accommodation. So the first is to fill out, you can do one or two or three of these options. You can either fill out an accommodation request form. It's set up where I get an email as soon as one is filled out. And I will either carry out that request or get you in touch with the person who will do it for you. Um, you can just email me directly as the accessibility coordinator or reach out to the appropriate program staff. So for folk arts and traditional arts, the folks are on the call today. And for any other programming, you just have to reach out to that staff person. And that's all I have for accessibility. Does anyone have any questions about um, the accessibility piece of the presentation? Um, any of the specific accommodations that we're able to offer or, or any other accommodations that you think might be useful in your organizations or your practices? Well, um, the, uh, the tenets of good presentation building say that you should tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them that, and then tell them what you just told them. And uh, that's, I'm sort of in the last part right now. This is, this is everything that we've just covered. Uh, we do have an hour for this presentation and we're only about halfway through. So uh, I am going to invite any of you to share questions, stories, ideas, needs. We, we don't have to, but if you'd like a little bit of conversation, this would be a great time. Well, I hope that you can see from how we're defining technical assistance that we're very much in a mindset of, of not holding on to the funding. You know, the point is really to find ways to get this state funding out the door to your organizations, into your artistic practices, and just really doing our best to, to aid in that process, make it as easy for everyone as possible. Uh, as Precious says, it's a, it's a kind of a, an open-ended process. We're never going to get 100% there, but uh, the idea of technical assistance is to get as close as possible and hopefully a little bit closer with every, with every iteration. Um, I uh, am seeing maybe Sabina from St. Mary's College is, is going to type something in the, the chat, potentially a question. Sabina, you're welcome to just unmute and, and jump in too if you want. Okay, that makes it much easier. Hello, Chad and everybody. Um, Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, as you as you know, Chad, um, we are planning to have an institute or to hold an institute, a folk life institute next summer. And obviously, um, accessibility um, is going to be really important. And so we ourselves need to provide technical assistance uh, for for people to make sure that it's broadly accessible to everybody. And we have, um, of course, people who are in charge of that for the campus, but it seems to me that you are um, potentially even further along than, than we are. So I'm just wondering if there can be technical training um, that you can provide for us so that we can do a better job with the Institute. Thanks, Sabina. Just to give everyone some context, Sabina is part of the, the team for one of our regional folk life centers serving Southern Maryland. Um, to that question, I would probably kick it to you, Precious. Do you have some insight on, on that? Sure. So actually, that is one of the recommended actions in the implementation plan. So some folks were saying, you know, it would be great if there was sustained uh, professional development, whether it was like a monthly salon series around certain parts of accessibility and how organizations across the state can include accessibility in their programming. So that's under kind of accessibility slash professional development. So Dana and I would be collaborating to bring that to fruition. Right now, we don't have exact plans for something like we don't have a date set. But if we find that it's something that is super relevant and super necessary, we will, of course, consider that for sure. Um, there was even another suggestion in the implementation plan for like a mixer. So maybe it's not, it's less presentation style, but it's more of people who have the expertise and the people who need the expertise get to connect 
and have conversations with each other. So okay, I would say- Yeah, great, thank you, that's very helpful. Yeah, so I would say if you have a need right now, if you wanna set up an appointment with uh, Dana and I, and we can kind of co-collaborate, co-brainstorm with you, then I think that's the best bet. And then of course, we'll try to be rolling out some more streamlined professional development. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, we are, I think we are not ready for it. We, we basically just got the award and we are in the planning phase. The Institute will be next summer, but um, I'm just trying to plan ahead. So we will have more questions uh, probably by the spring, but um, by then you probably have more structures in place and, and it sounds like we're on the same kind of um, schedule in terms of um, having infrastructure in place that's mutually helpful. It's definitely on the docket for sure. Yeah. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. And just for the good of the whole group, uh, I'll mention also that in addition to the, the regular professional development and resources that MSAC is offering directly, uh, we do also offer a professional development opportunity grant. It's a small grant. Uh, and if your team has needs that are associated with accessibility or really any topic, uh, where you think that you might uh, need a little bit more training or, or, or assistance of some kind. Perhaps you want to identify a symposium or a consultant that you want to work with for a short period of time. That professional development opportunity grant can, can help you do that, as long as it's all in service to the arts. And uh, Dana Parsons directs that program, so uh, it's also on our website, of course. So you can you can uh, you have another resource there. They're small grants, but they're but they're nimble and they can be very helpful. Any other stories, questions, or comments from the field? We've got a great geographical array of folks on the phone. That's always so nice to see. So, so anything that's crossing your mind, please bring it up now. Um, I, I would be interested in the accessibility training program that you just mentioned. Um, would you also help with uh, putting us in touch with professionals that could provide that sort of training? Absolutely. That makes me think of another action item in the implementation plan, which was an ask for MSAC to create a list of providers, of trainers of accessibility. That's a public list that anyone can, can use. So that's a great suggestion. Once again, the, it's a plan. We haven't enacted it yet, but hopefully once it gets adopted, we'll then start getting our gears turning to make it a reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Anuradha. The floor is open. As we say, the, the great value of this presentation is, is in is in what we're doing right now at this moment, but also the fact that it's recorded. So you will be able to come back and hear any of this material again. Uh, we're going to strive to get this on YouTube and uh, probably posted via Maryland Tradition social media. Do follow us on Facebook and on Instagram uh, and also follow our uh, larger MSAC, Facebook and Instagram, of course, and Twitter. Um, I'm, I'm going to close it out hearing no more questions and thank you for your kind attention this afternoon and uh, turn it over to Dana to take us out. I just have one last question. Richard. Please, yeah, please. Um, the, the creativity grant that you talked about, um, is that creativity, are you talking about in terms of creative work that we that we do in our uh, in our own independent fields or is it I, I wanted to understand what exactly you cover with the creativity grant 
Sure. Um, so the creativity grant really covers a lot of things. It's just it, that's just the name of it is creativity. Um, but it is project based, uh, meaning that it could support, um, you know, individualized projects, events, programs, things like that. Um, it also can support um, general operations for organizations as well who are not a part of the GFO program. So Anu, I, I, I believe that you are a part of our GFO program so that um, you would not qualify for creativity. Um, I think you work with Emily, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that unfortunately, since you're a part of the GFO program, you would not qualify for creativity. Okay. Um, but in general, it does um, it does cover uh, project based work either for independent artists or for uh, organizations, or then also the general operating support for organizations as well. I've got it. All right, thank you. Sure. Thanks so much, Laura and Anuradha. Uh, something something that I would um, a conversation I often have have about the creativity grant is that. Uh, even though you're affiliated with an organization that's doing South Asian classical dance, you you probably know many artists who are involved in both in that art form and other art forms who might not be directly associated with Kalanidhi, your organization. And mm -hmm. folks are all eligible to apply for creativity grants to support their own projects uh, and, to, and to just get that little bit of funding that might help their careers accelerate a little bit. So there, there, are, always, uh, there are always ways in for sure. Great, thank you. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. If there's independent artists that are, you know, that you know of or that you're working with in other capacities or anything like that, absolutely, you know, we would be happy to talk with you or them about, you know, how they might qualify for that program. Okay, that's, that's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today and thanks to Chad and Precious and Ryan and Laura. And um, we look forward to seeing all of you soon, virtually of course. Uh, I've placed a feedback link in the chat if you have a moment. It takes less than a minute to fill out and it's just a way for us to continue to be in touch about uh, how your needs are changing and how we can serve them in the uh, fastest and most efficient way possible. Uh, so please take a moment to fill out the form if you can. And as Chad stated many times, our doors, <laughs> uh, in this case, our inboxes uh, uh, and telephones are always open. And uh, we look forward to chatting with you again shortly. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.